Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another session of Gather to Grow here with Food from Zanzi on Twitter Spaces. My name is Dawn Numdu. I'm your host every week for the session, and it's an absolute pleasure to be with you once again. And this week, we're talking farm safety tips for farmers during the festive season. I think Dr. Jane Bay spoke about, you know, seeds being an issue and that being stolen on a huge scale as well. We just to recap for those who may not have been in the previous session, you know, the main areas your province is dealing with. And then I think maybe we can move over to more generic stuff. I think the last comment that Jason was talking about was also around issues around ESCOM and load shedding and network and maybe thinking about other ways to communicate if you are cut off um, from a secure network not having access to those communication tools that you usually do have access to. And then maybe just one point on a recent Food from Zanzi article where you were actually featured, Dr. Jane Bass, it was highlighted that stock theft has increased by 679 cases from July to September this year compared to the same period last year. What are the realities of this and how is it really impacting farmers and the agricultural industry? Maybe you can just take us through that, Dr. Bass. If we look at the crime statistics that was recently released by the Minister of Police, then the Free State showed, uh, I think, a 0.58 or 6%. It's not even 1% increase in last of the cases that was reported to the police. But still, even if it remains the same, there is an increase in livestock theft. And it's not the thing that we actually can say is decreasing. We haven't experienced in the past eight years since I joined Free State Agriculture, really a decrease in livestock theft. We really experience a decrease in the reporting figure, but we never experience a decrease in the actual theft of livestock. So it is in the Free State, I think, usually it's one of the three top provinces in the country concerning livestock theft. There's lots of cattle being stolen. There's also lots of sheep being stolen. I think personally that the amounts of livestock theft in terms of single incidents increase. That's why I refer to organized crime and groupings and syndicates operating in that specific environment. On average, they steal between 8 and 18 animals at one given time from farms. The average that we have determined through years now is usually 8 cattle, and the average now on sheep is 18 in one single incident from a farm. What is really also alarming is that we have picked it up this year that is also a problem, especially in the Kwakwa area, where you get cattle rustling. So that is a phenomenon that's not known really in South Africa. I know that it's restricted to some of the African countries like Kenya, where there's huge cattle rustling taking, taking place. So what it means is that you get criminals coming in, they are armed, and then they forcefully steal or remove your animals from you. So that is a concern that we are actually picking up, and it's a big concern. So these criminals stop at nothing, especially in the cross-border area, they are armed, and some of them are heavily armed, and some of them are not afraid to shoot. This is things that is taking place, and that is a given and a reality that the farming communities and farmers, even if they are emerging farmers or subsistence farmers, commercial farmers, must take note of. So we are concerned about the numbers that are being stolen from farms. And uh, like I indicated, there should be movement in terms of buckies, trailers, trucks. So it's important that we focus on that with the police service. The stock test unit is a bit of a problem to us, and that's why we had the rural safety strategy, the summit with the minister in Paris at the end of June, so that we actually brought to his attention that there's a huge problem and lack of resources at the stock test units in terms of manpower, in terms of vehicles. Also, maybe one of the problems that a lot of farmers do not want to report livestock theft to the police anymore because they indicate that nothing is going to happen. There's no investigation and then there's limited arrests on livestock theft cases. 
So the other issue also relates to the criminal justice system. As soon as there has been an arrest, those cases need to be successfully prosecuted in court so that there's evidence that's shown that these people have committed that specific offences. It boils down to, if I can say tips, is that it is important to use technology in terms of colours, in terms of alarms, wherever it is costly to farmers or cost-effective to them to utilise technology to their own benefit in protecting their animals and their property. It is also true that research has shown us that farmers need to count their stock on a daily basis, on a daily basis, not on every second day or maybe once a week or whatever. And that if they detect anything wrong, they need to be as soon as possible report that to the police and also to start looking for their animals. There's also recoveries taking place on livestock safe that we have taken note from our control rooms. But I think it's important that we encourage farmers to report livestock theft cases to the police. I know there's an underreporting figure, but it is the best thing to do is that we can know for sure that when you report the incident and it becomes part of a crime pattern, then the police and the farming communities can actually then determine when to conduct white and blue light patrols and to be preemptive and to become proactive. Because if you do a low low reporting figure, then your crime pattern is skewed. Then you can't effectively address livestock theft through normal crime prevention means and measures. So it still remains a concern that we try and encourage the farming communities to report the livestock safe cases to the police. Thank you so much, Dr. Jane Bass. Petrus, thank you so much for being here. Petrus Sito is a free state rural safety activist. He's been really active, you know, over the last few weeks. He's been sending me posts and videos. Petrus, if you can just click the microphone and then... But Jason, maybe just to comment on what Dr. Jane Bass was talking about in terms of the cattle rustling and it's such an important aspect and something that obviously we need to, you know, be making, raising awareness about. Is this something that's impacting your province as well? Yeah, Jane has made some very valid points there and um, she is an expert on this. So we need to pay attention when she says these things. Um, stock theft in Eastern Cape is also a large concern. Um, there is a lot of stock theft taking place. I think Jane mentioned the syndicates and there's a a professional element to what's happening. Definitely, it's large quantities of stock being stolen at a time. Because of that, it needs to be moved in a vehicle or transported somehow, which really brings me to the point of information and data being critical. And the more information we can have, the more powerful we are as community members and farmers. So reporting stock theft is of the utmost importance. A lot of people have lost faith in the police and the state, and it's an unfortunate situation, but I'd also like to encourage everyone to just report it. Don't sit on that information because you think nothing's going to happen, even if that is just to your agricultural structure, like the Agri Free State or Agri Eastern Cape. Like I mentioned, we have a coordination center here We use a program called Earth Ranger that we track all of these incidences on. So every member or any community member can send that information through to us. And then when we go have those meetings with the stock theft forums, we have data to talk about and say, you know, in this area, there have been 20 incidences of stock theft or in this area, five. But without anyone speaking up, there's no argument to be had. So we haven't seen much cattle rustling in our area, but definitely a syndicated stock theft sort of element throughout the province. And again, we're able to try and keep tabs on that using technology to our advantage. Another important thing is traceability. Uh, So ear tags in your animals that are traceable becomes an important element again, not only for disease outbreak, but also from from a security point of view. So 
We've got a traceability system called AIMS where every ear tag has a unique identifying number and a QR code. To give you a practical example, if a stock theft unit stops a vehicle in the middle of the night with animals on the back, how do you identify that those animals belong to who they say they are? With an identifiable tag with a QR code, the stock theft member could scan that with a cell phone and see who the owner of the, the animal is with a contact number and confirm, yes, this is my animal, it's fine, it's allowed to be transported or no, that animal is supposed to be on my farm right now. And then obviously we can do something with the police on that. So it does come down to reporting and having some sort of system in place and using technology to your advantage. Thanks so much for that. The one thing that I heard some farmers say, and specifically livestock farmers, is that theft and livestock theft is definitely you know, that barrier that, you know, stops them from even commercializing. One of the farmers that I spoke to, Ole, he literally said this to me to say, you know, this is one of the challenges for specifically farmers that just needs to increase a little bit to get to the commercial scale, says that it's a big setback for them. Dr. Jane Bass, maybe just in your experience, is this something that you hear from smaller scale farmers and subsistence farmers dealing with this and definitely being a hindrance for them to grow within the sector? What I think is really important is that I think the emerging sector and the subsistence sector is as affected by livestock theft as commercial farmers, even I think more, because they have animals and if they stole maybe 50 of the 100 animals, you steal half of their livelihood. They are really as affected, I think, maybe more as the commercial farmers. They are also being targeted. Especially in the cross-border area, there's lots of engagements that we pick it up. I think it's a problem to all the farming sectors in the free state that's being affected by livestock theft. Thanks so much, Dr. Bryce. Um, Pietras, thank you so much for joining us. It sounds like you're on the road. I did mention that you're traveling and you're active and you're on the road, but I'm so happy that we can at least have you here for the last few minutes of the space. Maybe just an introduction, who you are, what you do, and more about the work that you do in terms of safety and crime and keeping our farmers safe. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank God who chose me to fight for our farmers and farm workers here in South Africa. This vision of to be an activist here in South Africa started 2010, but this vision until 2018 when I decided that I'm going to fight for our food security. I've seen that our neighboring country, Zimbabwe, where by early 2000, when they chased the farmers in Zimbabwe. But now, that's how many as 3 million Zimbabweans are here in South Africa because uh, they're starving in their country. Now, I don't want our country to be like that. I have started this activism, went to union building to speak to the, to, to the president of South Africa. I'm challenging uh, the government. And also, I went to Mr. Peggy Kele last year to form a national rural safety. Now, tax team. I'm one of the uh, national tax team of rural safety. I've seen many things here in South Africa, terrible things, where there's farm attack, stock theft, the whole South Africa. And why why we have opened an organization called uh, PPS Stop Farm Killing SA. As from now, as I come from to Cape Town, yesterday I was in parliament. Now I came back. We are going to sleep tonight at Bloomfontein. Now, let me tell you, this thing of uh, farm attack, stock theft, it needs us. Because uh, as I said to you that uh, I'm the one who chosen by the Minister of Police, Begit Tele, to be part of the tax team of National Rural Safety. But there's nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. I've been challenging them and sending them emails. Sometimes I went to his office, Pretoria, to hand over my letter. Mr. Begit Tele, let's sit down and have a plan. How can we protect our country? Stock theft, uh, farmers and farm workers who have been attacked and killed every day. Like right now, some of my admin, they've sent me a uh, farm attack in Western Cape, in Pal. Now, uh, this thing is not going to stop. It needs us. It needs our organization to stand together and have a plan. How can we protect our country? Let me tell you, this thing that uh, is happening here in South Africa, it is bad. I'm not sitting at home and maybe watching the media of TV and say that there's farm attack. No. I'm all over here in South Africa, traveling and took those evidence and handed over to the Minister of Police that really it is happening. That's why I'm saying that we need to stand together 
and fight this farmer tax and stock theft here in South Africa. And as I say that, uh, it is not easy. It is happening wherever we have seen the children, women, they've been raped in the farm. Farmers are all over here in South Africa. We have seen farmers and, and farm workers who have been tortured, killed here in South Africa. We as PPS Stop Farm Killing SA, this organization, we have a plan whereby by next year, we are going to investigate all the farmers' attacks. We are going to work with the police here in South Africa because some of them, they're lazy. Next year, we are busy with the National of Minister of Bagitzele's office to arrange because we need our people on the ground to work with the police because we can't live like this. Uh -uh. Because every time here in South Africa is crime and someone is sitting at home and nothing doing, he will come here and say that to Come here, be part of this movement, be part of this organization, be part of the South Africans who want to save our country. We are here and we will push this government until we protect our country, our food security. Thank you so much. You definitely sound like you have a lot of drive to make the changes that's needed to be the voice and to represent not only your organization, but to say that enough is enough. I definitely hear that from you. So thank you so much for sharing your insights and do travel safely. And actually, Paul is a stone throw away from where I'm based. I'm sitting in Wellington in the Western Cape. So I think it's so important to understand that these issues, we can't brush it aside. We live in these communities. Farmers is part of what we need to protect. You know, we need to protect our rural communities, protect our farmers, protect the agricultural workers. And I think the one important aspect and something that you raised was also the abuse of women and women who get attacked on farms and in rural communities on a daily basis and that's probably a conversation that we can have on another day and specifically focusing on it and I'd like to invite other strategic partners working on these issues for that conversation again so thank you so much for highlighting that as well Beatrice. as we close maybe just if we can share some practical advice and tips and maybe just one other area and something that I also wanted to touch on is that there was also the recent development at agri Essays Congress where Sanlam, whatever agri-science, and the Northwest Base in WK together donated 1.1 million rand for the agri Securitas Trust Fund. Maybe between Dr. Jane Base, Jason, Pietras, maybe just your take on how this will change certain security within this industry. How much is it contributing and is it a type of game changer um, you know, addressing the issues and concerns that you've raised as part of the conversation this evening? Jason, I'd like to start with you. The donations into AgriSecuritas is a big help for farmers. From the Eastern Cape, we do put in applications on a regular basis to get funding through AgriSecuritas and our farmers generally use that for the CCTV network to put up additional cameras. Um, and it's something I'd like to just spend a minute or two on and understanding the, the impact that this has on farming. So everything that a farmer has to do to protect his entity is an extra cost he has to build into his operation. And farmers are price takers at the end of the day. So whatever price the market offers is what they have to accept. And all these additional things like security measures are not traditional farming mechanisms, but we have to now include that in our operation costs. And it, it does also add to the point you raised earlier about the barriers to entry into farming. And it's extremely frustrating that farmers, whether they be a massive commercial farmer or a subsistence farmer, have to start putting these additional measures in place. So something like AgriSecuritas does assist. But to put that into perspective, just in the Eastern Cape and just the network we manage, that's not even everything. We've got over 17 million rands worth of hardware in the ground in terms of CCTV. And that costs our farmers 255,000 rand a month to keep operational. So yes, it is a big help and it does come with open hands and we are grateful for it. But ultimately, we, we need a lot more money. And unfortunately, we don't get assistance from the state on this and it all comes out of the farmer's pockets. The more corporates that can come on board and assist the better for all of us. And it's also important to understand that that money is not used to protect an individual farm. One of the criteria for AgriSecuritas is that it has to have an impact on the community at large. These cameras don't just go up at a farm gate and only protect one person. It goes up at strategic points on national routes at intersections to help more than just that one farmer. It helps that entire community and it helps businesses in those communities. 
whether that be the shop or the co-op or whatever it might be, this money is used to benefit the entire rural community and not just one person. And a very important aspect to highlight. So thank you so much for sharing that. It's not just about an individual, the farmer alone, but it is about the community as a whole. And so that's such an important aspect also that you're raising, Jason. Dr. Jane Base, I know that, you know, Food from Zanzi has featured you and you've shared so many vital tips and there's actually an article that lists from Free State Agriculture ways to improve safety during the festive season. If you go to Food from Zanzi, that's www.foodfromzanzi.co.za, farm safety tip for farmers during the festive season. That's an article that you can read and go through all of the steps that Free State Agriculture has shared specifically over this period. But maybe if you could just highlight one or two key areas, I think you have made mention of it before. But just to recap for those who may have missed it, whether you're a livestock farmer, irrespective of the commodity that you're in and producing, what should be top of mind just to, to close off the conversation, uh, Dr. Jane Brace? The one I just want to say also that Jason has said everything that has to be said about agri-securitas and also the cost implication for the farmers in terms of technology. You know, um, my question that I would like to raise is that it's simple. Who are the perpetrators? Who are the people committing farm attacks, murders, livestock theft, copper cable theft, etc.? So if we can actually answer that question, I think we will be well ahead of criminality in the rural areas. So the question is, who are these people? Then it comes also down to, do you know who you are employing? I'm just asking the question. A lot of farmers have indicated in the past to me that they have employed persons and they did not actually done a screening on them or make sure that they are who they are. Uh, in terms of illegal foreigners, I know that is a question that always comes up in the imbezos that we are having with the subsistence and the emerging farming sector and also in the commercial farming sector. Do not employ people that you do not know who they are. So I think maybe the starting point in trying also to protect your property and yourself and all the other people living and staying on farms. I want to indicate that on farm attacks in the free state over a six-year period, the arrest rate is 40%. So there's a 60% commission of farm attacks that goes actually undetected that you do not know who the perpetrators are. But the question remains, is there a connection in terms of uh, previous employers or previous laborers or whatever on farms? Because they know the layout of the farms. We are not saying that they are always the perpetrators, but is there a connection? And you need to trust people with your property. So make sure that you really do some sort of a screening when you employ people. And then I'm referring, especially in the free state, people from uh, who are employing the Lesotho herdsmen. We are not actually saying that they are associated with criminal activity. But still, you do not have any track record in South Africa if you arrest a person that is illegally in the country or they are foreign nationals. So I think we need to try and see what the farmers can also do in order to institute specific measures to protect their property themselves, their workers and their families against any criminality. Thank you so much, Dr. Joan Bays, for that very practical advice and insight into the work that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you so much for joining the conversation, Jason, Dr. Jane Bays. I'd like to invite you back maybe to talk about, you know, some of these things in more detail. I think it's a conversation that can't just happen during this period. It's something that we can focus on over time to share more advice and do more in-depth discussion about what we can do as an industry together and not just, you know, make it the responsibility of you and your representative bodies to deal with it on your own. Um, so thank you so much. Petrus, I hope to maybe invite you again and maybe you can also update us on the progress that you've made. 
in rallying people to take your hand and work with you and others in the sector to protect our farmers. Be safe on the road. Thank you again, Dr. Jane Base. Thank you so much, Jason Gum, for your insights as well. Have a great evening and do stay safe, people. Be blessed, stay blessed and continue to do the amazing work that you're doing. Bye for now.